right, well, I think we might um, move on to um, our next panelist, um, which is, um, who is Ilsa. Um, so Ilsa, um, it would be, um, I'd be really, um, uh, would would really like to hear before um, we sort of get into the the topic. I'd love to hear a bit more about um, uh, the work of um, Meaningful um, Australia. Uh, it's um, I you know I have to admit that you know prior to um, our you know this conversation, I was not really familiar with the work of the organisation. So. Um, have been fascinated to read about what you've been doing. So can you tell us a bit more about um, the work of your organisation? Sure, thanks. Thanks, Helen, and um, what a great start. Thanks, Marlene. Um, Meaningful Ageing Australia is a membership-based not-for-profit organisation. So we're primarily funded through membership fees and our members are aged care services, community and residential aged care, and a number of them have retirement living as well. Um, so our main work is practical evidence-informed resources to help service providers really understand the deeper needs of older people and to respond. You know. So it's staff in all roles and it's a really holistic view. So as you um, read right at the beginning, we're really orientated around meaning, purpose and connectedness in people's lives and then connection with some specific domains that we know are really in, are important for people's well-being. So connection with self, connection with others, connection with creativity, connection with nature and some sense of something beyond ourselves or bigger than ourselves. Um, the label um, for all of this work is spirituality and spiritual care. But hopefully you've heard that it's not limited to a religious lens. So for some people, absolutely, they have a faith, they have a religion, and that's incredibly important and needs to be worked with in a much more nuanced way than a kind of tick box exercise, which has often been the case in the past. But also there's this whole richness there actually for all of us. It's about what sustains us, what gets us out of bed in the morning, our sources of hope, you know, those things that really run very deep um, for all of us. And um, our second piece of work is uh, a what started as a campaign, which has now um, sort of morphed a bit because a bit like um, Every Age Counts, we sort of realised this work is going to be very long term. Um, it's called See Me, Know Me, and um, it's worked specifically with older people in the general community, so not um, people that are involved with aged care services. And um, when we started it, uh, we, we launched early last year, we found, and even in the sort of pre-work as we were engaging with some older people around the key messages and, and what we were trying to do, we found this incredible craving um, by older people. And yes, you know, using that term, I'm aware it is such a huge, you know, it could be like 50 years, but um, by people to be seen, you know, and this exactly fits back to this ageism issue. Um, and, and often women, um, I've found a lot of women have come up to me when I was speaking in different places um, or do, we were doing things with the see me, know me materials, just saying, oh, you know, I, I feel so invisible. You know, it's almost like when I turned 60, um, suddenly I became a non-person and, you know, it's just not okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, we're absolutely, you know, working in partnership and collaboration with a lot of other organisations um, who, who are all, I guess, bringing our own lenses, um, but all trying to ultimately um, reach that, that horizon that Marlene's talked about where everyone is valued intrinsically for who they are. Um, so that's, that's kind of us in a, in a nutshell. Okay, lovely. That's, that's um, so interesting. And there's obviously a lot of synergy between you know, you've, you've got a different approach, you're looking at different things, but at the end of the day, it is around, um, you know, how um, older people can feel more connected and, and valued within our, our world. So um, it's so encouraging to know that there is um, this work going on. Um, what I'd like to talk to you, uh, um, or, you know, what I'd like, we'd like to discuss this morning, Elsa, is really... Um, Again, in terms of what we've been experiencing um, over this year, have you noticed a shift in the community regarding um, meaning and, and purpose, particularly when we were in the midst of those um, earlier, you know, very tighter uh, restrictions? You've talked about 
um, people getting sort of meaning and purpose from, you know, the connections to all those things. And of course, they were um, uh, removed in some cases, um, completely, you know, cut off or limited. So mm -hmm. What, you know, what, what has your, um, you know, again, either you personally or um, your, the work of your organisation really seen over this um, last few months? Yeah, there's a, there's a few things. Um, one of them is that um, I think everyone has already, you know, it's been observed a lot, the heightened sensitivity and awareness around these important connections for, for all of us, you know, um, I think probably in, internationally as well uh, as they've been threatened and our normal routines have been changed and things have been cut off from us. Um, also, one of the other um, narratives, I guess, that's emerged for, for us, and some of you may have seen it and heard it before, is people living, um, for example, if you're accessing community aged care, living in your own home and you have, you know, mobility issues or, or other things that prevent you usually from getting out and about, or if you're living in residential aged care, um, your life was already being limited potentially by the imagination of the people around you and the service system. And so, you know, at, whilst everyone else is saying, oh, no, this is, this is a disaster. You know, I can't get out. I can't do all the things that I want to do. And yet there's parts of the community and indeed actually asylum seekers, you know, there are various other groups in our community who've already been having to live, you know, a version of that potentially for many months, if, if not years. So my great hope is um, because of this increased sensitivity that we now have across the board about what that feels like uh, mm -hmm. is that perhaps some, you know, imagination can be sparked and, and some additional energy and, and attention and thought um, into how to, you know, make some changes around that. And certainly, you know, one of the changes that, that has happened is um, use of technology. And here we are, you know, this would have mm -hmm. been a face-to-face -face yeah. event and, yeah. and gee, it would have been nice to, nice to sit around and actually have a coffee with everyone <laughs> and, and um, share some things at tables. Um, but, you know, even uh, in terms of older people, um, with the various groups we've been working with, we've certainly, you know, been aware of a lot of things and we've run some things online with older people who usually would, would not have done something online, just wouldn't have been of interest potentially or just didn't feel like they could or whatever. Um, and yet, you know, these things have been enabled and made possible. So it's not not all doom and gloom, but um, yeah, certainly yeah, it is challenges. interesting the way that, um, you know, even for us in, in the workplace that, that um, you know, for, for me as somebody who's, you know, had uh, technology, I mean, I can still remember when I hand wrote everything or wrote a letter and gave it to the typist to, you know, type <laughs> up and, and things like that. So, you know, a, a big leap over the years in terms of technology being part of your everyday work. But, but the last, you know, these last sort of six to eight months has seen us all have to, you know, really sort of learn those skills. And, um, and you're right, it's, um, it, there's sort of pros and cons to that. It's meant that we've been able to maintain that connection. I've been able to, um, uh, you know, participate in a whole lot of um, training and webinars and things that I would not have been able to get to. But the downside, of course, is it's not quite the same. It gives you a connection, but it doesn't, um, it, it, you know, it's not really um, it, really the same as, as you say, if we were all sitting around the room together. So definitely sort of pros and, and cons. And um, But at the end of the day, it, I, I guess what's important is it shows, has shown that, um, you know, older people do, of course, have the skills to to adapt to, you know, new situations. And, you know, that's an important message for us all to, to, to hang on to, I think. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we also benefited, there's one um, project that we've been working on uh, for quite some time, and it was really at the pointy end during um, COVID. And so we were able to invite a small group of older people that we've been working with to continue on that project with us over, over good old Zoom. <laughs> Um, and that was around um, the map of meaning, which is a specific um, framework that was originally developed during someone's PhD and right. found to be a very effective way to help people engage with meaning in their lives. So I think, um, you know, this 
theme here today is such an important one around resilience and wisdom. And I think, um, you know, some keys from through the lens that we're bringing around how to build resilience and wisdom in our own lives comes through self-awareness. And also we're really interested in empowerment, which is part of our See Me Know Me work, is to equip people by understanding themselves better um, and being able to talk more clearly perhaps around what matters to them. They will be in a stronger position then um, when engaging with others in the community and if they ever need um, support services rather than being a kind of... Um, forced into a sort of passive recipient kind of role yeah. to actually be able to step forward into the space and say, well, here are the things that, that really keep me going. Yeah. So can I show you the map of meaning, Helen? Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. This is what it looks like here. Um, so it's got various um, quadrants and this specific, this is the book that we were um, working on during, during COVID. Um, you can see it's like a, um, it's a self-reflection guide is how it's structured. So just gently invite someone in to um, think about different elements of the map to really get in touch with meaning for themselves, you know, whatever that looks like. So it's not a, it's not a test, you know, no one knows what the answers are exactly um, because it varies so much. But some key kind of domain areas, um, I wanted to actually start by um, just asking the audience a question if I could. So I'd love people to write before I talk about the domains in the chat box, just think about the last um, week or two weeks and um, think about what's been most meaningful for you or something that's been meaningful for you. It can be a really tiny thing or, or it might be a bigger thing, but if people would be willing to share, maybe the panelists would be willing to share as well, just to um, pop into the chat there, something that's been meaningful for you in the last week or two. Great, I can see their connection with family. Oh, yeah. Yeah, reconnect with family as a group. Reconnecting with family. It's been yeah. a big week for that <laughs> with the uh, being here in Victoria, especially. Daughter, a neurodiverse daughter catching the bus for the first oh. time. How beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> time in nature. How have my efforts been helpful? Brand new grandson. Brand new grandson. Wow. Oh, Seeing yeah. family. Yeah. family. Yeah. 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 Beautiful. Yeah. So and I certainly, you know, that was my first thought um, seeing. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, both my children and their, you know, partners and so on to all together at the same time, you know, in the same, yeah. it was, it was terrific. Yeah. Um, and, but just before we move on, I, I was just thinking about that connection with nature and I caught the, I came in midway through a program on um, Radio National yesterday where they were talking about a pilot project in, um, in Scotland um, particularly in the Shetland Islands and now moving to a more sort of urban, I think it was, um, they were looking at doing it in Edinburgh, where they're encouraging doctors to prescribe what they call green prescriptions. And that is where the prescription is actually, you know, to do with um, undertaking a, a task, you know, in the outdoors or, or connecting with nature in some way. And, you um, I didn't sort of hear all of, of um, uh, you know, about the whole lot of it, but it's obviously been really successful. Um, and um, and and the other side, the sort of unexpected benefit of it is that it's also encouraged um, the prescribing doctors to think about their own connection with nature and and you know, getting a, a better balance within their own lives. So. I thought that was just, you know, an amazing thing. It would be great to see something here. Yeah, um, fantastic. But I think that is that, you know, and, and we've seen, we've all struggled with, you know, finding plants for our garden because there has been, again, such a, a, a surge in people really um, being able to have the time um, and or in some cases developing that interest in, um, you know, in, in growing things and, you know, that there's a whole lot of sort of analogies that can come from that. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I think that's, um, that's really, um, a, you know, really interesting topic. And as you say, we could um, uh, talk about that um, uh, in, um, uh, you know, lots more details. There is, in fact, um, uh, a, a comment from, from Christine that, who says, um, the garden has been more intense, intensely meaningful than ever. 
seems really intrinsic to grow my food and food for others. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, that that's a great yep. um, spot to um, uh, move on.